Hey guys, it's Casey uh, down here with the Fly Fish Food Guys. Going to tie up a pretty cool dry fly that I've been messing around with that has the uh, calf body hair post. Um, there's been a lot of talk about these lately. Um, a lot of people saying they like them, a lot of people saying they don't, a lot of people saying they like to tie them, a lot of people saying they don't. So I figured I would uh, throw one out for you. Anyways, um, and start out with a uh, size 12 dry fly hook um, this one just happens to be a fire hole uh, 419 um, we're gonna just start our thread a couple eye lengths behind the eye um, we'll take that down trim off the excess and uh, take the thread basically to the back of the shank. We'll let that sit there for a minute and then we will get some tail. From there I'm gonna tie in some Coke de Leon. Um, I like to tie this tail a little bit heavy just so that it's, it has some substance to it. Um, so we will strip some fibers of that and we will tie that in I usually tie this in about this, the length of the shank. Um, if I'm going to go either way from that, I'm going to go on the shorter side. Um, this isn't necessarily a Catskill style dry fly. So we'll go ahead and tie those in with a couple of wraps. We'll throw one in behind it to kind of lift and, and uh, spread that tail out. And then we're going to take, take the thread up the shank of the hook and tie down that tail and we will cut off that excess there and from there we're gonna tie in the post the infamous calf body hair um, a lot of people struggle with this stuff because it's not a hollow hair and it is quite tough to tie with but um, one of the biggest things is get a good patch. Make sure the hair is long and somewhat even um, so that when you try and peel it and cut it off the, the hide, you can actually get a sizable chunk to tie in. So uh, cut off a, a pretty good chunk of it, and then we're going to stack it in a hair stacker. So from there, we'll pull out of the stacker. And we want to pull it out of the stacker with the tips facing to the eye of the hook, like so. That way when you go to tie it in, you don't have to switch hands because this stuff is very unruly. Get rid of any loose hairs. So basically you're left with this. And we're gonna measure that about the, the length of the shank of the hook, like so. And we're gonna tie that in right on top of the hook. One loose wrap. One, one right over the top and then cinch it down. Now this stuff will kind of travel around the, the hook and that's fine because when we're going to tie in the parachute post style, you will pull it up and, and make wraps around it so it's okay if it kind of gets unruly there at the beginning. And You want to cut the butt ends off at an angle like this so that when you wrap the thread around it, it kind of just go ahead and, and builds the taper right off the back for the body. So that's what we're left with. And we'll go ahead and tie those butt ends down. The, the sooner you can do that, the less headache you're going to have with this hair. Get those butt ends tied down tight like so. And if you can see how it builds that taper just right on that body. And there you go. Now it's tied in. Take your thread back up to the base where you had, had tied it in originally. couple more thread wraps there and then you're gonna pull it all all up straight up like this and then you take your thread and you go under that hair and around it kind of pull it snug you want to get a few wraps there and that'll kind of get your parachute post started keep them snug and then from there you just want to wrap your post uh, you want to wrap it up high enough that you can get a, a decent hackle on it 
and have plenty of posts left but at the same time you don't want to you don't want to wrap your thread so high that you have to hackle a whole hackle feather to to cover the post um, pull it tight and then back down from there and then I'm going to actually take some thread and I'm going to kind of build up a little bit of a, a thread dam underneath that post right there in the front and that'll keep it standing straight up a couple more up front and a couple behind so there you go there's your post we'll go ahead and cut that off for the guys that get angry and have OCD okay so for this fly it's actually a very simple bug um, get that taper really nice for the body and the first material we're going to tie in for the body is just a simple piece of flashaboo um, the pearl color flashaboo uh, I use that to rib the body and it just adds some flash makes it pretty so we'll tie that in basically right there at the back of the post just so that it's good and solid and we'll take that back to the very back of the taper like so we'll stick that in the material clip and from there um, we're going to dub the body I've been using the uh, Hemingway's Beaver Dubbing Plus quite a bit and I really like it um, it's got a really cool con uh, consistency to it I guess you could say it's really soft and, and it dubs the thread really nice and tight which I like for dry flies um, and it's got some really cool colors so we'll go ahead and thread the or, or dub the thread and you want to keep it up there at the top fairly thin so that when you start to wrap the body you don't ruin your taper that you built underneath so we'll go ahead and dub that like so and we'll start out with with less the it's e always easier to add more later than it is to take it away so we'll start the the body right there at the at the base of the tail with that really light uh, end of the dubbing loop and then we'll just kind of start dubbing forward um, we'll just follow it right up the, the body that taper in the body itself uh, or in, in the underbody I should say is basically what you want the, the rest of the body to be shaped like so you don't want to overdub that and ruin that taper we will take that one more little piece and we're going to end the dubbing right there for now then we're going to take the the piece of uh, pearl flashaboo and we're just going to rib the body with that nothing special nothing fancy just open wraps take that up the body you want to keep them fairly even right up to the post and tie that off two or three wraps pull it back one, one or two more just to secure it we will trim that off and from here we will tie in our hackle first and <clears throat> when I posted this fly I had a lot of questions um, regarding the hackle um, the way I've I've started tying my fancier flies and I think it's more so just for my own likes I don't tie all the flies that I fish this way but I strip one side of the hackle and that is just kind of a a personal thing that I strived for when I first started tying for a long time to to get flies with really nice hackle on them so I, I started stripping them on one side and it'll basically look like that there we go um, now a lot of people will talk and, and say that it may not float as well it may not look as buggy and that's probably true it's it's not gonna have the same effect as a regular hackled fly but 
you can do it either way. You can do it whichever way you like. Um, it's your fly. So this one, we're going to tie in with the, the strip side of the hackle down. We're going to tie that in right in the front of the post with a couple of thread wraps. And then we're going to take it straight up and we're going to tie it up the post like you would with any other uh, parachute. And we're going to take that thread right up to the top of the thread that was there before. And actually, I'm going to add one or two more layers to it just so that it's a little bit taller. Like so. And then we're going to take the thread right back down. Right down to the base and right to the back. Cut off the excess stem of that hackle. Like so. And then we're going to put on a little more dubbing to finish out that body and put a head on it. That same color. Uh, this stuff dubs pretty tight and it stays on the thread really easy. You don't need to use wax, none of that kind of stuff. Um, give it a couple of wraps of dubbing in the back and then we're going to jump the thread forward and we're going to put the head on right there and then we're going to add a little more dubbing to get our thread back up to the top because on this fly I like to use uh, the method that Cheech uses with the super glue on the dub or on the hackle to finish off the fly so you want your thread to be to end at the the back of the post like so and you're gonna leave it hanging on the back side of the hook so that when you go to tie off your hackle it's already there so with this strip stripped hackle uh, it's key to get these these hackle wraps touching and in in, in pretty straight line so we'll go ahead and start wrapping and with the way we tied it in it, it lines it up basically so that as soon as you start wrapping it's already going in the right direction and we're going to start wrapping it down and you want touching turns but you don't want them overlapping because then it'll it'll start making that hackle all unruly we'll go touching turns all the way down that post and as you can see with that stripped side it lays that hackle almost perfectly flat and uh, that's kind of why I do it I've been obsessed with it and I just think it looks awesome so like so and then we're gonna take that that thread that's on the back side of the hook we're just gonna wrap it around that post and catch that extra or catch the tag end of the hackle like so and we'll do it twice and that's that's locking the hackle off right there and we're going to cut off the excess piece of hackle, get that out of the way. S mainly because I finished this with super glue and I don't want to get super glue all over the rest of that feather. So from there, I will take my super glue and a, and a, a bodkin. Um, you need very little. You don't need a ton of super glue and you don't want to have mishaps and super glue all over your vise and ruin the fly and, and whatnot. But just put a little bit of super glue on that thread maybe a half an inch or so then you want to just make one more good solid wrap maybe one more like that and that'll be done that'll be sealed and I always usually go back through and I'll put just whatever's left on my bodkin just right where that hackle ended like so and that'll finish that off go ahead and trim the thread So anyways, there you go. Hackled dry fly.